and welcome hey. to Fiasco First Friday here on Roll20. Say hello, everyone, so they know that you are real and not a bot. Hello. Okay, what, hello. what if we are bots? <laughs> we are real human people. Excellent. That is exactly the monotone that I was hoping for. Uh, our energy is high because our blood is running cold tonight on Fiasco First Friday. Yes, thank you. I saw that you liked my little pun, Jess. Um, <laughs> Uh, tonight, we are bringing you the cold, terrible world of the ice. Uh, Fiasco is a game by Jason Morningstar, published by Bully Pulpit Games, and we are playing a very specific play set. The game itself uh, has a little engine deck, and then there are multiple little play sets. And every month, for those of you who are, who are new here, we play a different play set with a new crew of people. I will be your host and Fiasco Chaos Coordinator, Jen Vaughn. My pronouns are she, they. And now I would like for each of you to tell us who you are in real life and your pronouns. Uh, and we will start with you, Mello. Yes, uh, I'm Mello Brown. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And uh, I am a screenwriter. I write on uh, Netflix, Stars, Apple TV Plus, and currently writing the graphic novel Blade Runner Origins, as well as more stuff on the way. Heck yes. All right. Next up, Jess Ross. Hello, I'm Jess Ross. My pronouns are they, them. And I do stuff. Uh, <laughs> sorry. You My edit, mind just went fully blank. You edit uh, tabletop. You write tabletop games. Thank you. I do Bye. those things. And I also podcast with Jen, the D20 Dames. Um, you can find my stuff on my website, rightjust.com. That would be easier than waiting for me to remember. That's right. Again, we can tell that we're already starting to get a little cold and our blood is starting to make our limbs heavy. We're getting into it. That's All exactly right. what's happening. Thank exactly. you. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Jen with two N's. Jen with two N's. Uh, I'm Jen Martin. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I'm the production manager for Bully Pulpit Games. So I had a hand in, uh, and in fact, I put roll, uh, Fiasco on Roll20. So that's... That's my work. If it's terrible, you complain to me. Um, yeah, I think that I, I also write RPG games and I do editing and all sorts of other things. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that you started with you can blame me or mm -hmm. thank me for all the good stuff that's been happening. <laughs> uh, very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So for those of you in chat who have not been here before, or, you know, it's been a full month, a lot of stuff is happening. It never stops happening, you know, but um, so it goes. Um, we at Fiasco, uh, the game is all about having fun together. Uh, it is a pretty minimal prep game, and we are going to uh, show you how easy it is to make the, the game happen um, at home uh, if you have the physical game or get rid of that on Roll20 with your friends anywhere. Um, uh, Fawn, can you take us to that next screen, please? So Fiasco, uh, we set up our little game board and it is a two act game. Uh, in the, um, it's one act, or act one, the tilt, act two, and then the aftermath. We will all be playing in scenes with each other and we can choose two options when creating scenes. We can choose to establish the scene where you describe what is happening like in the opening shot of a movie or a comic book, or you can choose to resolve and you pick a positive or negative outcome for your character. Not necessarily the story, but for your character. Uh, since this game is called Fiasco, though, um, the coin doesn't really flip up for most people at the end of the game. But it's about finding our, you know, those uh, the terrible things together. So uh, tonight uh, we'll be playing the Ice Playset, which is also by Jason Morningstar. So all right, everybody, shake it out, get ready as I set the scene. The wind howls, the windows creak with ice. We are in McMurdo Station, a slice of Americana transported to Antarctica and all that entails. We are in this little isolated American mountain town, if you will. Uh, we are here for reasons possibly known uh, at this science outpost. And uh, it gets a little intense here down the ice. Um, you know, we're just, we're not getting quite enough greens. And uh, some of us, you know, we tend towards poor decisions. Sometimes it can go wrong. And sometimes, um, 
you know, our own little personal hell can freeze over. So here we are, McMurdo Station. Who would, does anyone uh, want to establish a scene first? I'm always happy to go first. But... Jen, we got to lay out the objects and locations. Oh my first. God, oh my God, thank you. Thank you, geez, I got so into my little monologue. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now that you know where we are, um, as you can see, we have our relationships between each character. Let me double check if you can see. Yes, you can see all of them, cool. Um, so Mello and I, uh, we have this little card right here in between us. Um, and so it, it determines our relationship to one another. Um, same with uh, Jen and myself, uh, Jen and Jess, Mello and Jess. Um, we have also got, because of the number of players, we have two needs. And now we're going to add a location and an object. So Jen and Jess. Um, Let's, uh, let's put a location on yours. Uh, does one of these locations look good? I can also grab another. I pre-selected some just so we can move into the fun faster, but again, I can I can grab some more, so. Jess, I took the lead on relationships. Do you have strong feelings? Um, I wouldn't mind the, the what I'll see that we're, mm -hmm. that there's an opportunity for us to just dive <laughs> beneath the ice, but it just feels very, <laughs> Safe and normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just feels completely, yeah, typical for what's going on here that that would be the case. Safe and normal. Safe um, and normal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Gosh. Okay. All right, Mello, you and me, what would you like to have our object be? And again, we can pick some more. And these are ones that we will weave in with our characters. So. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't ever pick up anything else in the game, though. It's not like I'm allowed one object, so. Uh, let's go with sentimental. Sentimental? All right. So we have a symbol scratched into the bumper of a Sprite vehicle. So those are our little uh, our winterized uh, go-karts or uh, golf carts that we use to get from compound to compound building. All right. Now that we are fully set up, thank you, Jen with two ends, for pointing that out. I got... Always get carried away. Um, we are ready to go. Oh, wait, can we see that? Okay, yes. All right. Does anybody have a scene that they would like to establish first? All right, I will go. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so uh, we have our character names. We've got um, I am Vaughn, Mellow is Mellow. Jess is Ross. I will pull that back up. I must have deleted it. But and then uh, Jenna Tuins is Martin. So I would like to have a scene um, where Vaughn and Martin uh, find that they are uh, that they are living in the same sort of uh, bunk building. Like a, there's several buildings where people live, but we would be located like we, we have to share like the same like little kitchen suite and whatnot. And uh, mm. yeah. Um, How's that sound? That sounds amazing. I love it. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, Vaughn uh, is coming, is dragging in their little, uh, her her little, her giant five bags, like piled high with oh too much God. gear. Yeah. And uh, is looking around. Uh, she looks sort of like uh, me, you know, uh, light skin, probably like a uh, white to blue hair uh, and is a... Uh, <laughs> is a trash scientist. So uh, mm -hmm. sort of a person who studies the decay rate of trash mm -hmm. um, and uh, had to work really hard to get a job at a station in ice where decay is slowed down so much that some people think that maybe she shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but she- Some uh, people like, like me, you mean, the penguin scientist who's doing yeah. real science here. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Vaughn <laughs> comes in and just goes, it's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. Why do you keep following me? What do you mean following you? Uh, there is a lot of work to be done on detritus, decay, death incarnate in the snow. I have every right to be here uh, just as you do. Okay. Is that why you brought all five bags of trash you got there? Uh, okay. Stupid first of all. You throw it out and study it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is cosmetics. Uh, these are uh, natural fiber clothes. That one, that's actually my, just my clothes. I don't touch that one ever. Um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, so how are you doing? Hmm? I'm doing very well. I don't care. You. Sorry, I was just getting got you. <laughs> um, no, but really, are uh, you're not in this bunk, are you in the suite? This is my room. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to have to speak to someone then because that is not um no, I'm sorry. Not you, uh, acceptable. No. No, I don't trust you at all. You and your little flappy friends. Like, I know you're not going to leave me any of their dung to study. So it's just going to be me out there. Yeah, scraping around on my hands and knees. It's going to be, it's going to be Cambodia all over again. It's going to be Quebec all over again. You just go where all the fun trash is, don't you? Well, I guess that's why you're here, huh? And that's probably uh -huh. a good place to end that Yeah, scene, that's great. Right? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> now that I got a good burn in. Um, sorry, no, but um, also, uh, sorry, um, we should have asked you all, like, how, um, or we, we could say at this point, like, how should this scene be going for my character? Uh, seems like it. I, I mean, I think the, the good or bad resolution is, are you able to find a different bunk? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's for you all to choose. So what would you, uh, yeah. Just I was like, going to say, I feel like the good or bad resolution would be like how badly you burned Martin. And in that, <laughs> in that case, I feel like it resolved pretty well for yeah, you. Actually. <laughs> yeah, actually. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. Yes, this game is all going to be about quips and comebacks. So I will give uh, myself a little positive card. Oh, I just got quieter. Okay. Okay, um, let's see, a little positive card for me. Okay, does anyone have a, uh, do, who would like to go next, I guess you should say, because you can um, you can say that you wanna choose the resolution and then we will uh, create the scene for you. Um, just, you know, how much do you trust us, the rest of us? I've got one. Okay. So uh, this can be like later that day or maybe the next day. Um, uh, Je uh, Ross, I'm not sure what your job is here, um, but do you want to accompany me out to go visit some penguins to do science? Uh, I suppose I'll go with you out into the horrible cold. Uh, Ross's job here was they're uh, an environmental scientist who specifically studies desert biomes and when they were brought onto this project it was because they were going to set up um, like a separate biome to do research with like how the desert would work inside of Antarctica and then that just never happened so they're just still here and there's no desert biome and they hate it here mm -hmm. yeah Amazing. yeah yeah, I guess I'll go with you out into the cold. The penguins I, make it worth it, so that's fine. I think part of it is that I'm not allowed to go alone, and I have just been a bitch to everybody else that you're <laughs> the only one who, who will agree uh, to go out with me. Uh, and that's, you know, I'll, I'll, that's fine. I'm going to study penguins, which is what I've wanted to do my entire life. No one will stop me. Uh, so, so yeah, so I think that we go out, um, to do penguin science. I'm not sure. I, I think it's probably counting penguins is Perfect. the thing. Um, so, so yeah, so we find some place to sort of sit down and, and maybe we build like a little sort of tent enclosure and it's just sitting there all day long counting penguins. Um, I don't think anything, I, I don't know if anything dramatic happens. I think I'm going to leave it in, in the rest of y'all's hands to resolve for me because uh, we're just counting penguins. I can't, I, I can't go negative with penguins. That's, 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 such, a, that's such a bulletproof, what, what do you want me to do there? It's too positive. Was like I was gonna say, what if there's a, what if there's less penguins? There's like two that are missing. So, oh, dun, dun, dun. yeah, or or they all look the same. All their markings have changed overnight. I don't know. Just one of those. <laughs> what do I you, do kind you... of like the like all of their markings changed overnight. But like we came here yesterday and counted penguins and it was fine. And today it's just like clones mm -hmm. of the same penguin over and over again. Do we think Martin is a Sorry, I almost said that. Do we think Martin is smart enough to know? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what do you think, Mello? Hey, Martin, I think there yep. might be something weird about your penguins. 
Yeah, they don't look right. Kind of like clean off my goggle things, put them back on. Yeah, I'm like furiously scribbling, right? Um, this isn't, I don't, I don't know what, and I'm like increasingly getting frustrated. I, I think this ends poorly for me. I think I'm about to have an anxiety attack. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, the penguins, they look all wrong. Rush tries to give you the their thermos of hot chocolate. And as you just like, as Martin keeps panicking, they just bring it back and start sipping it themselves. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah. And you, and you hear a bunch of uh, melons on you and me, penguin noises. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, that's. I hate that I know penguin noises now. No, wait. Do you know? Do you know? Can, let's make some penguin noises. We'll be in the background while they're. Oh, oh. <laughs> Are your penguins normally this noisy? Is that another thing that you have to be anxious about now? I mean, no, they, they normally are this noisy for sure. I just. They don't. They they don't look right. I'm not totally sure. Um, <laughs> and I'm like flipping through like a binder like with pictures of penguins, and they all look wrong. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I'm not supposed to <coughs> go look at them, but maybe. Mm, and I, I think I'll actually get up and go out and like approach the penguins. I'm not supposed to approach the penguins at all, but I'm genuinely worried about these animals right now. So. All right. Um, should we, do you want to end the scene there? Uh, yeah, that works. Yeah. And then, um, so how do we think that went for Martin? That doesn't seem positive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> like th something has happened. The science is starting to get funky. Uh, <laughs> the penguins might have a cold or a human throat it, that that's on, that's on us it's not actually uh. <laughs> all right well i will give you a little negative card i'm sorry jen <laughs> it's fine it's fine yeah i don't play fiasco to win i play to lose <laughs> <laughs> i'm not here to make friends i'm here to lose <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah all right who would like to go next and we can um i'll go next yeah would you like to establish or resolve your scene uh establish all right tell us who is in it and what you want to do and yeah, also you can describe is... your character a little bit too and yeah yeah um so this is mellow suede uh he is a just a big dummy he's just a huge himbo who is almost seven feet tall and that's like the best quality that he has uh he is at this station because he just heard that he could get a scholarship he just figured that he would be able to cash that in um he is sitting in this room um and he's basically his job here is like a uh does anyone know what a boat swain is for our viewers who don't know what a boat swain is uh, within the navy you basically are just you pick up heavy things you put them down in other places for other people to have um, storage and food and things like that as things are being delivered. And his entire job is heavy stuff instead of actually having to buy the machinery <laughs> to do that. Um, so he is currently in the break room uh, drumming on a bunch of cans as he yells out for his coworker, Vaughn, 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 Vaughn. Oh, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, 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 it's good to see you again, right? It's good to see you. I have an update on um, on the break room situation, as you requested before. Yes, um, thank you. Uh -huh. So we have uh, exactly 17 new cans, and uh, we were supposed to get 20. I'm going to get to that. Um, so I know we talked about it before about the, the, basically that weird can opener thing. That is a can opener, right? I mean, that's, that's it, supposed to be a can. It looks opener. like a can opener. Okay. That thing that's come <laughs> out of the wall. Right. Right. And it's got the little like at the bottom, you know, yeah. the magnet. Yeah, exactly. 
Still it is works. it is larger than a can opener, I feel like, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was something else. It's not important what I thought it was. But when I tried it to have it do the thing that I thought it could do, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. But anyway, good thing your friend swayed here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is opening up cans by hand. So ignore oh. <laughs> beef bruises. So my one thing I want to bring up to you is if you would like um, chili peppers tonight, could you please explain what the other thing on the wall is? Because I put three cans in there, I opened it back up, and they aren't there anymore. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Um. And she goes over, and is like rubbing her hands, like, "All right, I got this. I got this." Uh, yeah, you got this. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Goes in, opens the door. Uh. Vaughn puts her face in and sniffs deeply. All right. As you and I know, science is not about. It's not about saying something is true. He just it's nods about... like he totally knows science. Yeah. 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 Um, Vaughn uh, thinks mellow suede is very deep. So, uh, and like, uh, and attractive. So like, you know, just like, is like, yeah, absolutely. Um, as you and I, have, science is never about proving something true, but making the circle of truth smaller, smaller. So I have determined that this is not a trash can because it doesn't smell like trash. It is also not a television. Okay. I I should have been a scientist. Mhm. Mhm. <laughs> but uh and <laughs> she's uh, uh looking at it uh you know and, and and like um we probably though shouldn't put any more food in it. So we only have so much food. I don't know if you remember Three hours ago, it was a microwave. Oh, <laughs> right, right. Yes, and she clearly sees the popcorn button and the um, defrost button. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sweat starting to trickle. Uh, <laughs> um, so do you think maybe somebody took the cans? Is, is there a trap door inside of the not microwave? Oh. I mean, let's get let's get a ladder and find out. Okay, I, I you told me to get a thing. I do that. Real yeah, long. or I guess you're tall uh, enough, but yeah, she's yeah. not gonna like be like lift me. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're in the ladder, and then they're um they're knocking uh on the the back of the the microwave, which is not clean, of course. Um, she's covered in tomato sauce that's congealed, and um, and then they uh. And Jen's uh, little fist accidentally goes through the back of the microwave. And uh, it's probably a good place to end that scene. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Not if you agree. No. <laughs> uh, uh, so how do we think that went for Mello's character? Mello's character, Mello. <laughs> I mean, I think it went really well. He managed to put cans in a microwave and didn't cause an explosion. So <laughs> that's true. It, it's also it seems like he discovered he helped discover some sort of like strange mystery, but is probably too distracted by like just how good he is at lifting things to be truly concerned about it. So I feel like probably positive. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I think the only problem he has right now is that he's very hungry. <laughs> he yeah. Yeah. Eat yeah. The soup. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And th now they're three cans down too. I'm also worried about Mello's uh, food safety license. If you're just crushing hands open and then like stromboli or whatever coming through your fingers. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, but you know what, you know, we eat like what, six pounds of dirt, eight spiders a year. So yeah. All right. So I will give you a positive card. All right, Jess, it is your turn for Ross. Would you like to set the scene or resolve it? Um, I would like to, I would like to set a scene mm -hmm. where slight flashback to when Martin and Vaughn 
just like just realize that they're going to be bunking together um i think that ross and Mello are like out in the hallway a little bit just like sipping on their hot chocolate and they like see this happen and decide to just like sit and sit their hot chocolate and like watch Vaughn and Martin argue with each other just like in a really immature way and they're just really enjoying it and that's a scene that I would like to establish <laughs> this is going to be great this is I needed this this kind of entertainment in this facility it it it, it kind of it kind of sucks we should all be getting along right I mean like there, there's only how many of us and like it I mean, if they if they take each other out, fortunately, there's more hot cocoa for the both of us. But kind of just want we we need more friends and more science people, right? Like that's how these places work. We need more science people. You hear Martin screaming, "Where did you even get your degree from?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we want science people, but at the same time, don't we also want entertainment? And Ross sort of, and Ross like pulls another thermos of like a new hot chocolate out of their, one of their things. You you can't ever really tell like what's going on with Ross because they hate the cold so much. So you can tell that they're very, very tall and they've got um, sort of like medium brown skin. And that's all you know about Ross because they're always just so covered in jackets and snow pants and hats and scarves. You can never see more than just like this part of their face and nothing else. Like, oh. And so they pull out another thermos and like, but like this entertainment seems really, really good, doesn't it? Also have some more. Have try this one. I, I just found another recipe. Okay. I mean, like you have like this endless amount of items on you. Don't you have some compassion in there too, Ross, to give out? Like there's there's gotta be something. I mean, like they're, they're arguing about degrees. I mean, like I got one at the rye like i went there and like did you know that when you just open the door to give you one? but that's a whole other like it, <laughs> and, and you we you are hear, all here for a reason okay. you hear vaughn you hear vaughn scream back to martin i got it at the steve zisu aquatic academy <laughs> i graduated with quadruple flipper honors <laughs> Honestly, Melo, the only degree I'm concerned about is the one that should be in triple digits right now, but it's not because it's freezing here. And I do have compassion. I have compassion for us, you and I, Melo, and how bored we would be without this great entertainment and also without more hot chocolate. Where are you getting this? Like, where, where are they coming from? Like, is it? Oh, yeah, that's. It's, it's a good point. Our our friendship is established over material things. Maybe maybe you want to give them some hot chocolate. Maybe we we can share this compassion somewhere else. Maybe a we pillow can flies it. into the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I would be I would gladly give them some hot chocolate, but maybe not right now while they're fighting each other. Or do you think it would be better to do it now to break up the fight? I just. All right, I, maybe, maybe maybe if I run in there and just stand between them, or just maybe, like, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Melo busts into the room and is just like, hey, everybody, who, who wants, uh, I, I got the one canister that Ross drank. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who likes sit ups? And <laughs> who wants to just. Like just oh yeah like this is this is going to be a great time here everybody this is going to be so good there's like um those birds with like bow ties those little guys they're just chilling out there and um there's a lady with an infinity scarf that has an <laughs> endless amount of items inside of it and um i could teach you everything i learned at the fry let me do yeah yeah. While Mello is so just fun. like struggling to get them to stop fighting, Ross has pulled out another thermos of a different flavor <laughs> hot chocolate and is just drinking mm -hmm. that in the background, like watching what's happening and is just sort of nodding along like, yes, to all of this. Indeed. Vaughn turns to Ross and she goes, I'm sorry, are you the president? The president of what? Uh, are you asking us to do the presidential fitness test? Because I passed that in 10th grade doing my one chin up and my two pull ups. I so, heard fitness test. 
Oh I- my gosh, please, please. I would never ask anyone to do any fitness. Mello does it because he enjoys it, but like I would never wish fitness upon anyone. Please believe. <laughs> Have some hot chocolate. Vaughn like takes it and looks at Martin all angry. Like she doesn't get any, right? Oh, everyone gets hot chocolate, right, uh, Mello? Yeah, and Ross starts yeah, handing out hot chocolate to everyone. <laughs> Dang. I immediately I, just like I have never not trusted anyone, but and, but at the same time I'm like I'll drink first. Like, <laughs> I'll take the first sip. You take a sip and it's the most delicious hot chocolate you've ever tasted. I'm like okay. this is this established by our relationship with Ross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's entirely based on this. Or yeah. we we have no other defining qualities. <laughs> That's true about us. Yeah. Beautiful. So does the scene end with all of us just quietly gulping together in some ASMR nightmare? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that we won't do in case you have misophonia. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you can imagine a nightmare. Um, oh man. Well, that's a pretty positive for the group, but uh, I don't know. How do we feel? Because Ross just lost a lot the, of hot chocolate. The fight was broken up before any bodily harm happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was actually expecting something to get thrown in. Uh, so I'd say it's pretty positive. Uh, po- I'd say positive for the group, but how do we think that worked for Ross's character? Do you think Ross oh. wanted the fight to stop? She did not. <laughs> no. She did not at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we think that's a negative? or po- So I'm not trying to dictate either way. I'm just uh, restating um, uh, that... The- they were enjoying the entertainment value of it so you're just mad because you thought ross wanted Ron to do setups <laughs> and so you want it to be negative <laughs> i'll do hey listen i get i got space back there i'll do sit-ups for the entire chat i don't care, I don't care. Is, that what you want? is that what you need as a person i'll do it <laughs> um so jen and Mel, i'll let you uh one more time do you want you want positive or negative uh Maybe, i want I negative I, yeah. I think we're negative <laughs> You like, oh, you got them. I turned them on you. <laughs> it's easy. All Just right. wait until we find a body, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll be mine. Oh, that's and that's the energy I like. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. Perfect. So now we have all done one scene. And so now we get to go again. We do not have to go in the same order. Uh, so we can, and again, we can time jump a little bit. That was a, a beautiful flashback, by the way. Good job. Uh, Jess um points points so those roll 20 points that um the, they haven't opened the roll 20 store or the bully pulpit store yet but uh mm-hmm. aside from the ones where you can buy these games huh cool thing got it um okay so does someone uh want to go next or does someone have a scene that's like a or or um i have a or, scene i'd like to establish boom. okay dang all right with vaughn oh okay no not in a bad way for some reason whenever i say something positive it sounds like i'm being sarcastic but i really (laughs) did mean not in a bad way that time anyway (laughs) um i guess sometime after ross i don't know either like abandons martin to the like weird penguin situation or they get back together just depending on how that resolves later uh Ross is inside and sees that Vaughn is uh, probably still sulking about the, like, the rooming situation. Um, And says, hey, I would like to take you to the place in the station, the only place that can ever make me feel better. Would you like to join me? Um, yeah, that would be, that would be great. Absolutely. Do I need to like, are we going outside? Do I need to gear up or? um? No, it's actually the warmest place in the station. This, this better not be the toilets. Well, I would have thought that you'd like those, but it's not. So I mean, I like, the, I like the toilets. I just don't like people in my lab, you know? So I, uh... <laughs> right. That was my mistake. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I'm taking you to what would have been my lab. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. What? So, so we're, <laughs> okay, so we're, you're Charlie Brown walking. Uh, yeah. And I'm standing next to you. And well, what, what do you mean? What do you mean your lab? What, why, what happened to it? Well, when I was first brought on, there was supposed to be, you know, they're going to set up a research center for me. 
um, this is before you got here. I know you only just arrived. There's supposed to be a research center for me specifically that I was going to study like the desert biome within Antarctica and that didn't happen. Um, but fortunately, I guess they were able to repurpose that area for something else. And it's kind of like, especially since you're new here, you probably haven't heard about this yet. So it might be exciting for you to learn about. Um, and Ross leads them into sort of like an observation deck overlooking like a massive room. Mm -hmm. um, and down there, there's not a lot of like stuff set up down there, um, but there's sort of like uh, a bunch of weird like dunes kind of a little bit farther out. And Ross points to those and is like, out there hiding in the dunes, there is uh, some sort of thing that we found. It just like one day showed up and broke into the research center seeking out warmth. And no one really knows what it is. All of the people here who study like, you know, cold animals, none of them have seen it before. And it just seems like really into warmth. And since this was the warmest area and it kept trying to break in here anyway, we just sort of like gave this area over to it and I'll never have my lab. But I just like to like come in here sometimes and stand on the observation deck and look out into the beautiful desert. Well, I mean, technically you do have your lab. It just has an unexpected uh, item in it, right? Like there's, there's still sand here. There's something living in it, right? Isn't that a, a, a biome? I'm sorry, I only deal with um, like the, the particles and things that come out of biomes. I don't really, you know, the, and I deal with a, a microcosm. So uh, I'm unsure like how, what were, what were you hoping to do here? Well, I would have furnished it with a lot more like desert life and, and plants and things, but that's the only thing in there. And it like built those dunes itself to try to hide itself, I guess. I don't really know. This was all just flat before it moved in. Also don't get off the observation deck, stay up here. Don't get oh. too close to it. Oh, okay, but Ross, I mean, they, you could name this creature after you. You could do uh, uh, observations of this creature. Like, you could bring this creature to the world. Like, how is that not a cool thing for you? I guess this is an observation deck. I could do some observing. I don't know about bringing it to the world. I don't know if I want my name attached to that much bloodshed. But I I'm sorry, what? certainly, yeah, I think you're right. Maybe I should spend some time just like <laughs> actually writing down some of the things I noticed about whatever that thing is out there. I'm sorry, bloodshed? <laughs> bloodshed? Bloodshed? You know that thing that happens sometimes <laughs> that blood is inside of you and sometimes you get like a cut or like a scrape across your entire body and then the blood comes out is shed. That's what bloodshed means. R right, right. It's uh, It pours like the um, the roof of a shed. Yes, absolutely. That's yeah, it's sort of like the trash of the body. Well, <laughs> I'd say it's trash once it hits the ground. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that's true. Once it's commingled with some grit that shouldn't go back in. But um, I'm sorry, you said bloodshed. How warm is this? Obser how, how warm is it inside there? And is it less warm than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? <laughs> Which could explain the bloodshed. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's pretty warm. It's, uh, it, it's typically kept at about like a hundred degrees because it's going to be a, you know, a desert biome to let desert life thrive in there. So it has to be kept pretty warm. And for whatever reason, this creature just like came out of the ice and decided that it lives here in this, in this biome now, which is, I mean, yeah, now that I'm thinking about what you said, that is pretty fascinating that like a creature could just like go from the ice and snow of Antarctica, and now it's just chilling in this biome, and it's made it its own. Exactly. And uh, Vaughn leans in closer to Ross and says, and if you help me find some scat, we can do more to figure out what this is. Then, do you want to end it there? Or Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> I always feel weird being like, and cut, because I know. Uh, I mean, um, I know you wanted to make sure to get the mention of scat in there, and not that okay. really matters. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. We have our, our poo patrol meter. Thank you. Can we hit that? Uh, we yeah, Mellow and Mellow Suede had questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So, what started off? I mean, what do we? How do we think that was for uh, Ross? I mean, that definitely went positive for both of you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What like? Oh. I mean, sad about the biome, but you got this unexpected new creature. Ah, nothing could go wrong here. Oh, yeah. 
Exactly. This all, again, seems safe and normal. Safe and fine. Let's get that positive card. Thank you. I love it. All right. I'm glad me and this great creature are going to have a good time together mm -hmm. and nothing will go wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like finding a dog that is part of your soul at the uh, pound for sure. Speaking of creature, I definitely have a establishing. All right, hit us. All right. So I am uh, at like our quarters and I am uh, currently banging on Martin's door. Uh, but... Martin, 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 you gotta see this. Martin, this is the best. Okay. This is the best thing I've ever seen. You have to come see this. Okay. And, and so, yep. uh, Martin, Martin is Martin's like head. five feet tall, by the way. So there's like a yeah. comical height difference <laughs> happening. Yeah. yeah. Like I, <laughs> yeah, I run so quickly down the hall, and like she's catching up, and I have time to run back and be like, "You gotta see," and I, I run back. I'm like, "You gotta yeah. see." I'm yeah. Like, I'm no, coming. Permission, permission, permission to pick you up and just take Fine. you. Fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, I put her over my shoulder. <laughs> and we just run down the hall. We like go all the way down to the gym. And I'm like, just look at look at this yolk specimen. And it's actually one of the penguins is lifting one, just pressing 120 like at the bench of just like just full reps, like I'm like, are you on eight right now? Are you on eight right now? Right, Mar Martin. I don't know. Martin has fainted. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up fell right down on the ground. Oh, bro, bro. What did, what did, oh, what did we, okay, okay. Like, just get, just put her on the, just put her on the bench. Just put her on the bench. Right, right. Like, just, just, like, you got one of those, like, no, no, the, the Fiji water. The Fiji water from Death's. Not just the regular gym water. Okay. And, like, we, um, we, Pour Fiji water on Martin's face, like, hey, hey, are you, are you okay? Are you alright? Mm -hmm. like, and I'm like, uh, what? Uh, what is happening? Uh, so, um, his name is Alfre, and uh, he is flipping ripped. What is he doing inside? Um, he is becoming a specimen. Like, this is about science, right? He is. Uh... <laughs> Look, look at this, bro. Like, what, what? I I don't know what you all are doing up here. I don't know what I am doing up here. But this is... What you all are doing is special. And this this is amazing. What, could, you, could you explain? Like, what, what, like, when are the rest of, when are the rest are going to be like this? She has like the fish mouth thing where she like opens her mouth to speak and then closes it and then opens it and closes it. <laughs> it shouldn't be in here. Why? Who let it in here? I, I bet it was what? Vaughn. It was Vaughn trying to prank me. I'm sure. How do? How how do you how do you do this as a prank? Wait, how does how does that even? You know what? That rules. <laughs> I, I love science. I love science now. Oh Someone teach me math. Do you have one of these that do math? That would be like that. That would also rule. And like, yep, yeah, bro, sit up right now. And we just like going like competing to see who could do like the most immediately. Yeah. Mark, look at him go! Look at him go! Look at him go! <laughs> and then like all of a sudden, one of his flippers just goes right behind his back. And he is still going. I'm like, what, what is science rules? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Martin, mm -hmm. explain, mm -hmm. please. I cannot. And she like turns on her heels and walks out. <laughs> I know exactly what my next scene is going to be. <laughs> All right. You feel like that's a good place to end that one? Uh, storming out. Yeah. Oh my gosh, one-armed push-ups. <laughs> All right. So man, well, yeah. Um, I mean, I I feel like that was a pretty positive for Mellows Suede. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely a negative for all penguin kind, possibly. Um <laughs> to be bromesticated, but uh um sorry. <laughs> But yeah, take a negative for that pun, Jen. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I'll give myself a negative. Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, 
uh, Jen and Jess, what do you, how do you feel? Uh, that was from Mello's character. Oh, I think it was great for him. It was amazing. Yeah, that was definitely a positive for Mello. Like, he's so excited now about science and this buff penguin. Like, mm-hmm. that's, things could not be he better for Mello friend. right now. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Beautiful. All right. Double positive for Mello. All right. Um, well, Jen, did you want to go since you you were like, you're like, on I fire. sure do. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, so... and, and, and we can't have more than two people in a scene, but yes. Yeah. yeah sorry, I, I, uh, I need someone to play the station doctor because I am going to go to the doctor convinced that I am hallucinating because a penguin cannot lift weights. Doesn't Ooh. happen. Nope. Uh... Oh yes, how what can I what can I help you with today? Well, I mean, I I I think I sent you the report about all of the penguins looking different the other day because I'm sure that I was just hallucinating or whatever or maybe maybe I have a vision problem. Maybe that's what's going on. But but Mello took me to the gym and Ooh. there was the penguin in the gym lifting weights. Which is not possible. And so I would like you to tell me what I can do to stop hallucinating here. Uh, Maybe I have some Antarctic sickness or maybe, I I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been spending a lot of time in the cold lately. I I don't know. It it sounds to me like this is a, I mean, what you're talking about is not exactly unheard of. I think maybe what you need is some rest. I'm sure that's not it. I uh... have you tried sleeping? When was the last time you slept? <laughs> I mean, I I did I slept yesterday a bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Um, I just I just am really dedicated to my work and I only get so much time here and I really just I need to finish my study so I can get published. Um, and then maybe I can go uh, to South America and study the penguins there because I, I, I'm a penguin scientist and I'm supposed to love it here and I don't love it. I'm hallucinating weightlifting penguins. Please tell me what is wrong with me. Well, have you thought about it this way? If you only have a certain amount of time here and you're hallucinating weightlifting penguins because you're not getting enough sleep, then you're not really getting any science done, are you? So maybe if you try to get a good night's sleep, then you can actually spend the time that you do have here not hallucinating. I actually, I actually want to interrupt, but like you can hear me and and Alfred in the background, <laughs> like counting out reps, like one rank, two rank, three rank, yeah, four rank. Like you got, I, you got, you got and, 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 and you can hear uh, in the also the other in the other background uh, with your other ear. Uh, you hear <laughs> you hear the sound of like metal being scraped as uh, Vaughn is searching the trash cans to see like uh, is stuff that like at the bottom trying to collect any gunk. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, my follow-up question is how do I sleep here <laughs> with all of this? And that's a great question. I know that it can get a little bit noisy and if you're not familiar with the area, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. I have some, you know, r- pretty weak sleeping pills that you can try. Um, if you'd like, you can try to have a sleep in the, I've got some some cots in the back for people who need to like stay here for longer for observation. You're welcome to use one of those. It's pretty quiet back there. Uh, but definitely, I, it sounds like you're under a lot of stress talking about, I, I please don't take this the wrong way. It almost sounds like you need a break from penguins because everything you've described so far has revolved around penguins. I'm a penguin scientist. Penguins are my entire life. Mm-hmm. Even before I came here, every sentence I have said since I was eight years old has been about penguins. I think it's fantastic that you have such a strong passion and that your life has taken you in a direction where you can work so closely with that passion. I wonder if maybe your life has been about penguins for so long that you're starting to hallucinate penguins into places where they aren't there. But you, do you hear, do you hear, do you hear the penguin noises from the gym? 17, right 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 (laughs) um i definitely heard a sound uh i i actually have never gone to the penguin observation area i don't 
know what penguins sound like. Um, that could be gym equipment. That could be mellow, being mellow. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to dismiss what you're saying. I just feel very strongly if what you're concerned about is hallucinating penguins, that maybe you need some really good rest and maybe just take a day or two off from penguins. Can I have the sleeping pills? Absolutely. Um, and the doctor like grabs some sleeping pills and it's in a penguin shaped container <laughs> and they hand it to you with a completely straight face. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go try to get some sleep. Uh, and I, I want to try to go find a, a place I will be undisturbed in sleep. And I have a feeling that will not go well for me. But y'all can decide. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, let's say you go to like the um, you, maybe there's the common area with like a couch and like a pool table and all that stuff. And you, uh, you uh, I'm going to say that, yeah, you, you do go sleep there, but you keep seeing like penguin shapes on the wall, <laughs> but it's just people in like uh, onesies that are shaped like a shark or a penguin, you know? So they're just little, <laughs> and they're like walking by. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and there's probably like, I assume Ross is, does Ross have like a fancy thing that always provides hot water? Like, or do you actually have to ever heat up water? Definitely a fancy thing that always provides hot water. Okay, amazing. Okay, that's so an option, don't... I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you never even need to use the common area. So, yeah. How do we, do we think uh, Martin is able to get some, some, some rest? Or are they going to be pushed, is she going to be pushed uh, further and further to her penguin point? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think she's going to quack up. Oh. <laughs> wow thank you everyone good night uh we're ending an hour early uh, no. <laughs> oh okay all right cool um negatives um. for everybody Sorry, like <laughs> oh, mellow, mellow, mellow. you want to get one in too <laughs> um yeah um uh yeah <laughs> I, I i think i think it will go um i actually think it will go Man, there's no, there's, I, I want, I'm trying to put a positive spin on it, and I absolutely can't. And uh, she's uh, definitely going to be going out for my further as we go. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that, Jen. But yeah, um, beautiful scene, though. Loved it. The Great. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Your doctor was amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I base their dismissive attitude off of all the doctors I've ever been to in my life. Mm-hmm. Which is all of them, so to be fair. Yeah. All right. Uh I have a scene if uh, if that's okay for uh um and uh I think I would like uh it to be with um uh with uh so it's gonna be Vaughn and Ross uh down uh like going down from the observation deck into the biome, but we have asked Mello to watch out um, for us so he, so we can um, like to watch the mounds and make sure that we're going to be okay. So to sort of like keep, uh, be the eyes for us in the sky. Me and, uh, me and Alfre, we, yeah, we, got, yeah. we got you both. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, Vaughn brings, uh, they, they have their scat collection kit. It's like a, an apron with like a bunch of jars scrapers but also just one big knife because <laughs> this is the wild even though it's a biome so <laughs> and they're sort of uh I'm trying to like hold the knife like in their neck you know like they they're trying to like put okay no not in the pocket okay oh that's cutting my pants oh no oh no um hold on uh and so like uh, okay so we're, we're like we're, we've gone down the like the little uh ladder from the observation deck and then did you say that there were like um little catwalks over the the dunes yeah there are now okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry yeah so we're like we're walking quietly over them uh so ross um what are you observing so far <laughs> these shifty dunes <laughs> 
Uh, well, so far, what, I, what I've observed is, like I said earlier, that it really seems to appreciate warmth. We couldn't really get it out of this area. This is the area that came, like it came right for the, the warmest area. So it seems like it can sense heat in some way. Um, I've also observed that it doesn't seem to like humans very much. Or maybe the opposite, that it likes humans maybe too much and finds them delicious. Uh, which is why you're here, actually. That's how you got brought on. I'm sorry? Uh, I've also <laughs> observed that it seems to be able to build dunes on its own. Um, I, and I, I haven't been able to figure out if it, like, burrows under the dirt and it, like, leaves behind its imprint or if it's, like, actually building them up. Mm -hmm. But either way, it's look at those, like, perfect dunes. You don't see dunes like that in just any desert. Those are beautiful dunes. Right, right. Uh, yeah, Vaughn is not sold on Dean perfection or Dean supremacy <laughs> here, but is like, okay, like trusting you as a fellow scientist. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess um, I just, we don't, it only seems to be building these dunes. It doesn't seem to be like eating or uh, again, uh, not since the last Scott scientist left. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> There were, I'm sorry. I was told this was a new position, not uh, that I was replacing someone. I'm sorry. Oh, I I didn't I didn't know it was like supposed to be a secret or anything. I thought, I mean, like I thought they had posted the list of positions out by the, uh, like by the front of the facility. There's definitely there was well, definitely a scout scientist here before. I'm so sorry to tell you, but I don't want to lie to you. I'm sorry. Do you mean that list of names that's like eight yards long? Yeah. I thought those were the people like who I thought those were just scientists of the past that we admire. I mean, those some are... of them are in the past now, but <laughs> how how much bloodshed was here? Um, how many probably... how many people survived? <laughs> well, while, I mean... while this is happening and like we're keeping a lookout, um, by the way, um we're we're both kind of partially keeping a lookout. I have what is the only music device available, which is like a Zoom. And it's really old and bust down and has songs from 20 years ago. So we're listening to, like me and Alfie are listening to like Hot In Here <laughs> by Nelly. But it sounds like it's placed inside of a solo cup. <laughs> um, so we're like dancing along and like we are pretty sure I see one of the dunes move and I'm like, Alfie, that's that move, right? Right. Scientists, people. Yes. Um. Do dunes are do like? Do they move? Do dunes move? Do they move? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're ready? dancing along to your Zoom. <gasps> That's no, the dunes don't move. Wait, no. How do you know? This is a new, a new creature. Turn it up! Screams uh, Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, it still sounds like it's just a louder in a solo cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but do you have a, what do you do in this circumstance? Like, we don't know what it eats. We don't know what, I mean, other than humans. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we know just, <laughs> we'll <leave it> <laughs> um, so like, is there like a pebble that you flick in this circumstance? Like, uh... no, I never considered getting close to it until you suggested that I was content just staying on the observation deck and, you know, keeping an eye on from afar. We're only here to, to check out the scat situation. Uh, I've never tried to like distract it or like draw it out really. I was kind of too, you know, I didn't really, again, I, I didn't want my name attached to bloodshed. So I was trying not to like draw its attention to anywhere. Um, but if you want, we could definitely like, I've got some stuff we can throw. I'm down to just throw some stuff. Do we need yeah. to throw some stuff? Yeah, I actually brought um, Martin's house shoes. So let's just throw though. It'll like, it'll seem like a foot falling on the, on the dune. So um, absolutely that, that. Yes. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Cool. Uh, yeah, and so Vaughn throws uh, first the right foot and then the left foot. Cha cha slide, and then um, uh, sorry, the zoom got me in there. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, unlocked a terrible forbidden room, uh, and uh, we uh, we see the. Ross, I'll let you describe if you want. I don't want to. 
Uh, I mean, definitely like uh, when you hit it, when the dune that you hit with the house shoes starts to sort of like tremble and the dirt from the top starts to like cascade down the edges, like something is about to like come out from the center of it. Um, and Ross is like fascinated with this, but is also slowly walking back on the catwalk. <laughs> but is like <laughs> jotting things down as they're walking mm -hmm. backward, like, whoa. Yeah. I've never seen a dune do that unless it was filled with insects. <laughs> So um, over where we are, <laughs> uh, uh, like I right, hear, right quack, 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 quack. I'm like, yeah, okay. Hey guys, hey, hey, hey everybody. Uh, Alfred just told me um, the cover of all things is suddenly. <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's very he he was very specific. It, the cover of all things. Or bit, what was what did you say? Oh, uh, the bringer of um, of all death is uh, come all death. So what dramatic. are you? What? <laughs> so like, Vaughn is Ross, leaning up. <laughs> Ross has like hooked a, a finger into the back of Vaughn's coat and is now <laughs> dragging Vaughn back with them. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we like scramble uh, up the ladder and then through the door red as like the sand starts like flying around. Uh, and uh, yeah, do we want to end it there? Like with uh, not fully yeah. seeing what's in the... Rain. Or sorry, did yeah. you get... Alfre says look out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alfre. You've been most helpful. <laughs> oh my... <laughs> the bringer of the... Okay, all right. Um... Oh yeah, that was my scene. So how do we think that went for... For Vaughn, who didn't die, I'd like to point that out because it seemed like Ross was ready to yeah. sacrifice. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. No reason. No reason I brought you here. <laughs> no reason. No reason I would never come here alone without mm -hmm. bait. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, Vaughn didn't find any scat, so negative probably. <laughs> that is what I was there to do. So, yes, you are very right. It's a negative. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, all right. Um, and it looks like that is the end of this act. Um, so as you can see on our little game board, we each have two two cards um, uh, next to our names. So for those of us that have, uh, and we can, and you can each do this if you right click on the card, and then yeah, there's a, and you flip it, uh, you'll be able to see the other side. And so since Mellow and Jen Martin both have the same color, you will just be adding up those numbers. And then Jess and I will be taking our two colors and whichever one is the higher one. So I have, say I have a plus three that's blue and a plus one. Um, I will be subtracting the lower number from it. So I have a in total blue two. And this is the kind of math I'm talking about everybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean I have a red three? Correct. So I'm just gonna write those down. Um, two, one, one, three. All right, and then so mellow. Blue plus four. Yeah. So you have a blue six. Blue two, and then Jen, what is yours? Oh, you were muted, Jen. Muted. Sorry, uh, so I have a red nine. Yeah. Red nine. I have blue too. All right. So Mellow and Jen, since you two have the highest <laughs> numbers of any of those colors, um, you get to choose uh, which cards we use. So we will be picking two of these for the tilt. That's what this part's called. Um, and yes, if if someone if if uh, people in chat, if you need a bio break, this is a great time. Uh, but so Mello, you can look at all the blue cards and then pick your favorite to go in the middle for the tilt. And then Jen, you'll be picking the red card out of all the reds that are available. Okay. So we can make pop these up and make them a little bit bigger for people. Feel free to uh, think it out loud too. 
I can hear your process. Oh, I don't even, there's no process. It's just a dangerous animal gets loose. <laughs> like, oh, okay, okay, you already know that's the one? Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, already, yeah, we're kind of going in that direction, anyway, yeah. Let's see, the ones I'm, I'm choosing between right now are um, paranoia, a sudden reversal of status, fortune, or sympathy. Um, failure, a tiny mistake leads to ruin. <laughs> All right. Um, um, or what is the last one? Failure, something precious is on fire. <laughs> There's no way I'm not doing something precious as on fire. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is it. Yes, that is a popular uh, choice because it's funny <laughs> and also <laughs> fire is good. I mean, honestly, fire could possibly help us in a yeah. might be so, useful yeah. in this particular situation. Heck yeah! All right, so now um, you will keep the rest of your cards uh, on your little side. On your little side, excuse me. I mean, make it sound diminutive. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then uh, little, cards. little cards, keep them over there for the maths. Um, <laughs> and yeah, because we will be keeping them for the um, the when we make the aftermath. So we have uh, for anyone that has just returned from the bathroom or the snack pantry, we will be adding something precious is on, is on fire and a dangerous, dangerous animal gets loose. Uh, I feel like I should mention we've been very good about talking about our relationships, but we shall not and shan't forget these objects and needs uh, yes. as well. And we can uh, sort of uh, uh, roll those into our scenes as well. And again, it's not a bit, I mean, it's not hard and fast rules, but that's what they're there for. So, I mean, especially that Wendell see what I'll see seems pretty, pretty great. So. <laughs> And also whatever the symbol is. So um, does uh, someone have a scene that they would like to do uh, next? Or establish? Uh, or, or does someone sure. want to throw themselves on the pyre of letting us choose their scene? <laughs> I'll, I'll establish. OK. All right. So uh, me and Alfred, because he is not my familiar, um, <laughs> we, are, um, we are basically where we are both sitting in Ross's lab and uh, we both have like glasses on as if we are intelligent and um, uh, with our like just aren't hands for, like this waiting for her to enter and uh, yeah and so Ross enters the room <laughs> when they enter when Ross walks in and sees Mello and a penguin they like look at both of them and look at sort of the rest of the room that they've set up to just like bring things in and study occasionally and it, there's like no personal effects in here because they're very bitter about losing their biome lab so they're like trying not to make it too personal in here um, but they see those two sitting and waiting for them and they look back at their stuff and she's like <sighs> okay i don't know that i'll ever be ready so just go ahead and say whatever it is Happy to see you too. You know, um, we would like to make a proposition. I'll get to it. So, you like hot cocoa, yes? Of course. Well, there's one person who receives the food supplies before anyone else here within the facility. Go on. You see, me and Alfred here, which stands for absolute unit, is an anagram, but he doesn't know how to anagram this word. Um, we plan to go into a co-op weightlifting competition that is in San Diego. The only way we're going to get there is... <laughs> You're making me crack up. I gotta not look at you. <laughs> <laughs> the only way we're getting there is if we get out of the station. You don't want to be here either, do you? I do not. Then I don't even know why I needed to bribe you with the hot cocoa, I guess. But anyway. I was just about to ask how the hot cocoa is involved, but go on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought you liked your job, I guess. People should like their jobs. But anyway. Um, what if we found a way to, there, there's a microwave that leads to something, 
I don't know what it does. I don't know where it goes. I am very hungry. Um, is there a way that you could science it to be worse? Science of the the strange microwave to be worse? Yes. Uh, bad enough for us to leave here. Almost certainly. Oh, thank God. And we, we still have the go-karts. And I sketched out a little picture of Alfred over here in the go-kart. We could just be flying out of here, listening to, um, you know, Nellyville the entire time. It, it's the perfect plan. Ross. We'll put a pin in Nellyville and come back to that later. But yes, let's talk about the microwave. <laughs> um, so the last thing that happened with it was that uh, I put three cans in there and they went away. Um, and then Vaughn put her hand in there and there was nothing behind it. And then she pulled her hand out and we just, and she just told me, no, no. And, you know, like I listened to her. She's my trusted colleague. Um, and from there, we have just kind of like put a yellow tape thing over it. And then, um, like Alfrey over here, yeah, uh, he, he came up with the idea of what if we, what if it is a black hole that leads to another dimension and were to expand if more items were placed inside of it, or if there is anything that it could consume that would cause it to explode, but like, but like safely explode, right? I mean, you're the, you're the science person. I think, first of all, that Alfre might be trying to kill you. Nothing personal against you, Alfre. Uh, but certainly we can try this. Um, it's, how certain is Alfrey that this is some sort of black hole? What do you think? He verbally did this. <laughs> Understood. Uh, yeah, something that we can do is investigate the microwave black hole um, and see what will happen. I, when we started this conversation, thought you were gonna ask me to just like start a terrible like kitchen fire using the microwave that would have like, you know, expanded fumes and then we'd have to evacuate and people would come get us out of here. Uh, what you're describing sounds a lot more dangerous, which is fine. Was, That's something we can talk about. I was the microwave. That was, that was original. But that, that's here and <laughs> uh, We can certainly investigate the microwave black hole. Uh, what I would like to do is you and I will go check it out and we'll bring someone with us just to, you know, check it out First, first step. First step is you have someone else check it out first, if you think that it's going to be dangerous, is you put someone in front of you. That's a good life lesson, I think, for you, Mello. Yeah, that's, I appreciate that. I'm usually the, the first one in and last one out. So that, that really, that really means a lot. You're my uh, hot cocoa buddy. So it's not going to be you. I'm hot cocoa buddy. And like, I like that we could say that and there's like no connotations in there. <laughs> Um, what do you think, Alfred? He asked, does the, the person need to be human? What a specific question. No, they don't need to be human. Does Alfred have someone in mind? Um, other penguins, I suppose. Okay, we could do that. I think that we'll have to figure out a way to get it to get this to work without letting Martin know what we're doing. I don't think Martin would appreciate us using penguins in our experiments because that's kind of Martin's thing. Um, but we can, yeah, we can definitely we can we can grab a penguin and uh, and see how this goes. If it helps, uh, whenever Martin sees Alfre, she just doesn't anymore. She just doesn't do anything anymore. So she just kind of just like. Yeah, like the last time I saw her look at Alfrey, she was just her uh, nose bled a little. She was like, my spine. Mm -hmm. And then she left. So I guess if Alfrey hangs out around Martin. That sounds great. Yeah, let's go grab a penguin and shove it through the microwave and see what happens. And we'll go from there. 
Okay. Uh, Alfred, could you go stalk Martin for a little while? Keep Martin away from the microwave. <laughs> All right. That seems like a great place for that scene to <laughs> Asking the penguin to stalk Dr. Martin. <sighs> Professor Martin, I'm actually not sure what you're uh, evidently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Doc Martens and you only wear Doc Martens. So, um, uh, okay. How do we think that scene, uh, that was Ross's scene, correct? Or was that Mello's actually? I that was Mello's. Mello, sorry. I feel like Mello, I feel like Alfrey is turning Mello evil. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yes. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to say negative, right? There's something, I, yeah. I think I have a on. whole lore thing in my head as to what Alfrey mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna give a little negative to Milo. Um, here we go. There you go, right by your name. Uh, I have a scene, unless someone else has one that they want to do first. Um, no. Okay. Uh, so I would like this one with uh Vaughn, obviously. I guess <laughs> I go outside my being. No. Um. Uh, Vaughn and uh Martin. Um and. Alfrey can be there since it'll be happening after this. Um, <laughs> so, Mello, if you want to play Alfrey. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Vaughn sort of corners uh, Martin uh, uh, in their, like, you know, shared sweet area, uh, like at the beginning of the next day. Um, Martin has never looked this disheveled in her entire life. She's got bags under her eyes. Her hair's all messed up. Um, wow, you look amazing. Um, what did you do? Did you change your routine? What do you want, Vaughn? Okay. Uh, Vaughn sort of like scratches their face and then. Okay, something's happening around here. And I don't know what's going on. And I don't like you. I just want to put that out here. But mutual. Good. <laughs> don't agree with me. Ugh. And um, I know that you are good at what you do. And I think we need to um, we need to check out outside of the biome, the desert biome, and see if we can figure out a way that the creature got in. And if other creatures are coming in, I just, I don't know what's happening. And I'm a little distrustful of, um, of Dr. Ross, just because uh, I'm just not sure. It just seemed like maybe they were offering me up as some sort of sacrifice for um, uh, the biome. Please, so let me, let me stop you right there for a minute. When you say the creature, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, um, yeah, there's something in the desert biome, um, and apparently, uh, it I killed there a lot. Wasn't of people. supposed to be a desert biome. Well, there. Uh, sorry, it's been creating its own little sand dunes. Oh, um, right. So that's troublesome. I think. Um, I also wasn't able to find any scat. Big, big red signal in my head on that one. As you know, like un unless the sand, unless the sand. Tiny scat? <gasps> Micro scat? <gasps> um, All right, deep breath. It's okay. it's going to be okay. Deep breath. Okay, so do you, um, can we go right now and go check out um, under uh, around the biome? Are you right. okay with that? Suddenly, Alfred just appears at the door. <laughs> 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 and Martin, like, startles. Yes, please, let's go anywhere but here. Okay, um, cool. So He's we just... will... Like curling while watching, <laughs> which is great because that's like at her knee height. So just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Maybe we can just like skip to us being outside, and then um, no, but but Al and Alfrey's there, and so um, just because I yeah. I want to use these. All right. Yes. Yeah. Finally. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Alfrey also has goggles despite not needing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's their Oakleys. They're like <laughs> to go with the Zune. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, yeah, the, it's cold as all get out outside. What is it like negative um, 30? Are, are you in like sponsored uh, uh, cold stuff or like is it from a university, your jacket and your puffy jacket and all that stuff or, or do oh, we all yeah. have like scientific based ones? Yeah, uh, yeah, it, we've got like like top of the line, whatever. Yeah, 
yeah top of the line whatever love it oh oh my god i love my whatevers <laughs> they're uh, they have like the best yeah they're so comfortable but then like your sweat wicks away so it doesn't smell um which is very important for me because i need to be able to smell everything um for the trash so all right so we're like walking around the side of the uh um the desert biome and uh there's um uh one of those uh little go-karts up against the side of the uh the biome and there's like a little symbol carved into its bumper that's like a, a little spiral going in but then with one horizontal line uh crossing through it hmm uh Vaughn looks around just goes is there like a, a game of zombie that you were all were doing or are there gangs here? Okay. Not okay. I know. Of. <laughs> Martin is like expressly ignoring the penguin because if she ignores it enough, it will go away. Um, <laughs> that's all I needed to know. Um, okay. Well then forget that. That's clearly mystery solved. All right. But, uh, and then behind the, the vehicle though, um, there's like a, there's like a little, a, like, a hole that's been covered up by like some other stuff and like oh my get, dr martin get over here there's it looks like this might have been where something came in what do you what do you see with your um with your 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 penguin eyes my penguin eyes what? you don't have any idea what i do do you what? well i know you're not like a were penguin i just meant like with your scientific eyes, like, uh, you know, um, what do you see? Well, uh, I mean, you can see the claw, claw marks? Claw marks? That's interesting. He kind of, like, leans down and kind of gets close to it. <laughs> Those... I'm so, those look a lot like claw marks and then like, excuse me. And she just picks up Alfie bodily, uh, Alfie bodily by the middle and like holds up the foot to the, the wall. <laughs> I, oh, okay. But sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, this, these are the same as a, these are penguin claws. Look it's at the shape. The shape's the same. Wah. Yep. Wah. But some of them are bigger. This is a lot bigger. And then it, uh, Vaughn puts Alfrey down. Sorry, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. I should have asked. Um, uh, do you like um trash? I got like a, a little bit of a candy bar left. Oh no, sorry. I got a protein bar. Okay, that's in the protein <laughs> bar. Okay. All right. I think. Uh, should we go in? To, to comfort Martin, Alfie gives her half the protein bar. I do not take half the protein bar. It's only imaginary <laughs> thing that I'm sure is in my head. <laughs> when Vaughn asks, should we go in, you hear a voice that sounds a little bit like Ross, just sort of like in the distance saying, yes, definitely. All right, that seems like a great place for the scene to end too. It's like us in front of this like large hole, penguin scrapes everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, all right, how do we think that went for uh, Vaughn? I think it went pretty yeah, well for good. Vaughn. Like I came with you and I helped investigate and yeah. So who stepped in first? Uh, I'm sorry, it was Martin, right? Did we we didn't go in? Did no, we? no, yeah, we're just in okay. with it. Like we're in the we're in the like okay. the little archway, the foyer area. We haven't stepped in yet. Um, <laughs> why do why do you care so much about our marching orders, Mello? <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna give I'll give, I'll give myself that positive card. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that's positive because I got I got yeah. got some help from uh my good old enemy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. All right. Uh. We have uh, some scenes left with uh, Martin and Ross. I would like uh, to resolve. Ooh. So if y'all want to put me in some hot water, that would be <laughs> great. Feel it. Or, you know, some, some nice. ice. ice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. Yeah, just some just... hot chocolate. Ooh. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Do we want to continue that scene and have something happen to Martin um, with this creature? Which also, by the way, make sure to check our little Google chat messages. By the way, if anyone's not checking. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, that, I think that sounds good. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so we're going to have Martin end up going first because of their love of uh, penguins. Um, and my terror of Alfrey. Yes, absolutely. Probably both of those things, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, who else should be in that scene? I guess Vaughn will be in that scene, but it sounds like Ross is following and Alfrey is there too. Yeah. Ross... Ross is sort of nearby, but definitely not within sight. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and just for like, so everyone knows where everyone else is, um, Mellow Suede is probably, are you still in the observation tower maybe? Um, I would say, um, because I want to establish this, I am um, sketching a symbol of Alfrey on the side of my sprite. So I will, I am, on standby while doing something very important. Okay, excellent. Okay. All right. Um, okay, Jen, you want to start? <laughs> start right there. Uh, yeah. So, so we go into the desert biome. Um, I, I like. I would think that the walls are like fairly thick, right? Because uh, the outside is Antarctica. The inside is a desert biome. Um, and uh yeah and i i find myself in uh in dunes which i don't i've never visited this place before so uh yeah this is all very new to me and it feels very wrong to be searching for penguins inside the building where there is sand dunes and it is very hot in here and so I feel like immediately I start taking. Are off you monologuing? Layers. Shouts Vaughn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And so she's yeah she's going from like minus thirty to a hundred, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. The the coat's okay, yeah, so coming you're, you're off, and the hat, mm -hmm. and the headband, and the gloves, and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so, and like at the same time, like. Uh, Alfred is like catching all of the clothing. <laughs> oh, no. Be like so like helpful. <laughs> uh yeah, uh Vaughn is just watching it all fall and just go, yeah, I'm not touching any of that. Um, but is like checking out Martin's muscles and like, oh <laughs> why it is, as the poet says, hot in here. Um, and starts to <laughs> <laughs> unzip their jacket too. And it's like <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> danger, danger. Um, uh, oh, sorry. No, just uh, like <laughs> Alfrey is just a bit very appreciative that you um, <laughs> that you quoted the the best artist in mm -hmm. um, in the century. <laughs> <laughs> like Alfrey's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alfrey's got like a little bandaid on their face sometimes too, yeah. just the like just album cover. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's a, how, how far ahead does the, the tunnel go? And, um, is that, I think I smell something. I'm not sure. Sorry. I was gonna let you answer your, my question first. I realized I was bulldozing you like, like I always do. And I'm changing. I'm a better person now. <laughs> not just because I saw your muscles. Bon, are you okay? No, I'm very worried that we are going to die down here. And uh, I, like a, yeah, yeah, that seems like a rational fear right there. Um, and not my irrational fear now of penguins, it turns out. Um, but yeah, I, um, I, I wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. I will obviously be excited to be part of the nitrogen cycle once that happens. But again, not planning to do it here. So um, yeah, so we're like feeling mm -hmm. around. Uh, yeah, um, is there stuff in front of you or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we come out into the sand, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of dark in there, but it's really hot. Yeah, yeah, extremely hot. Um, and uh, I'm going to say that we, we actually see, like, a, a penguin coming, like, up behind us who's not Alfie, Alfie, uh, 
and like uh who then like goes over to one of the dunes and just sort of like uh scrooge mcducks it mm -hmm. diving in and like mm -hmm. you know wedging themselves to their little feet and we're just like up up was that you no no you're right there so alfrey immediately puts his arms up and is like pushing you both away just wham. It's just like do not do not go near that penguin. Get closer. It's safe and normal. Yeah, I heard it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of things. There looks to be a penguin in here who is diving into sand in hundred degree weather. They're not supposed to do that. But penguins aren't. Thank God we have to... a scientist here to point that out. Continue. <laughs> Thank you. They're also not supposed to be weightlifters. So, like, I don't know. Fuck me. <laughs> I mean, not like we are in the middle of an expedition. So just uh, hold that one for later. Um, <laughs> um, Vaughn's looking around. So I, um, and like uh, the, the, um, the mound sort of likes to shift is like shifting and then it just sort of like uh, gets a little taller and a little more perfect in its roundness um and then we just hear like a, a big old like what like this rip roaring and i'm like um uh, vaughn's just like i i think do you, oh my oh, we should go <laughs> yes we should go right now we should go we should go yeah yeah and Vaughn like steps back and slips into uh on what can only be described as a pile of scat uh and that's uh uh sorry we can keep going though she's like getting up like huh, uh, <laughs> martin martin hurry go you need to go <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're like uh are we are we trying to rush back out the way we came uh ooh, or or go out Via yeah, the observation yeah. deck. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm gonna say we split up. All right, all right. Which way do you want to go? Uh, oh god, the one time I need a die, uh, I go up the tunnel. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I mean that that seems fair. Um, I have managed to take all of my layers off, and so I probably wouldn't want to go outside in minus thirty degrees with right. like a tank top and some cargo pants on. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm, hammer sling. So, right. so yeah. So I, I'm gonna make a break for it and and try to run uh, to the other, you know, to the to the ladder to the observation deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Which, since I'm resolving, I'm gonna oh, say yeah. that it does not go well for me. Um, you know, I mean, I'm really I'm trying to cross this distance, and uh, and yeah, I think uh, Vaughn, as you exit the tunnel. You just hear me scream, and I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm just going to leave it right there. No. Because I have a whole other scene coming up, so. Yeah, yeah. We'll, okay. We'll find out, yeah. Okay. But it does not end well for me. All right, maybe that negative. Okay, Ross, do you want to resolve or establish your scene? Hmm. I was thinking that I wanted to have Ross just like standing on the observation deck, taking notes about what was happening. But I think instead, I want to I want to resolve. I think I want to resolve for for Ross next. Okay. Uh, what do we think? Uh, do we think uh, Ross is on the observation deck or Ross was outside? Uh, seems like they definitely had some sort of like camera set up on the outside uh, of this yeah. biome experiment yeah. that they uh, were pretending they know nothing about. Oh, I'm so sad. Poor me. My desert didn't come in. Oh, but My there is a desert. Is over. Yeah, I really <laughs> feel like this was all one big setup. So they yeah, are watching actually. from the. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> me? <laughs> Officer, I don't know. My uh, millionaire husband has gone missing. A surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our other favorite character. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're watching from the observation uh, deck uh, or like. Um, not necessarily um, in the tower, but on the deck, and you've got like this, like uh, I'm trying to think of something that's not from Inspector Gadget that I don't know if like that, <laughs> but like a book, a book that's full of 
a book, but instead of just pages, there's like several different TV screens inside of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I guess a cell phone or, you know, an iPad, but well, but a fold. No, I like one. that it's a, yeah, I like that it's yeah. foldable. Yeah, your phone, you got the Samsung fold, Galaxy Fold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool is, yeah, exactly. You basically got that, but it's still got like the classic linen. Anyway, I'm describing this book for way too long. Okay, yeah. And so, <laughs> you just turned into full Gendo Akari. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sun sets at 2 a.m. You know. um, so, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm going to say that Martin comes up to, is like scrambling up and seeing that you're watching like these many different scenes playing out mm-hmm. from your, your place of semi safety. And yeah, so a little confrontation. In that case, as soon as Martin like gets up onto the observation deck, um, Ross is going to stop her and be like, look. And when you look back out at the dunes, you see they're all like shaking violently. And from one of them, just a huge black flipper just like reaches out and slaps down and another dune like bursts forth. You got away from that. That's very exciting for you. What is happening, Ross? What is happening? Why are there penguins in sand? Why are there sand dunes in Antarctica? Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm, I, I told you I'm an environmental scientist. I study desert biomes. And I came here in order to study what was supposed to be this. Like, Alfred says science. you're lying. I don't think Alfred knows anything about me. And anyway, if it's penguins that are dangerous, why are you trusting the penguin that's haunting you? It's not a dead penguin. Stalking you then, excuse me. Maybe he just really likes me. I've come to accept it, it's fine. Let's focus on you and this unethical research that you are doing. Excuse you, my middle name is ethical. What? (laughs) (laughs) And anyway, I'm only doing research. That's not a like word, I'm sorry. I'm only doing research here now because when I showed this place to Vaughn, Vaughn suggested that I shouldn't just give up on this biome since there's clearly something thriving here. So now I'm studying it. I'm just using what my previous setup would have been if I'd been able to set this up the way that I wanted to. Also, why are you blaming me just because something's in the desert? You're the one doing the research here. You're also researching penguins and there's penguins down there. You're the one with all of these camera is that my room and they like slap the book into the next page <laughs> no what are you talking about it's video of vaughn scrambling in the can <laughs> 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 my, my head! <laughs> i don't i don't think that you should keep doing this research i think this research is unethical and you need to to stop putting us in, in, with these weird psycho gigantic penguins that are not normal or natural. And I think it's strange that you're blaming me, that you, the penguin scientist, are blaming me for weird penguins. Are when you sure you want to do this, me? Ross? Because I have already been pushed way past the brink here. And if yeah, you yeah, honestly, it seems like you need some sleep. Yeah, sure does. I would love to sleep if there weren't fucking monster giant penguins. Sorry about that. The second one. Uh, If there weren't giant monster penguins, then maybe I could sleep. But I can't sleep. And so what are we going to do? Are you going to stop this unethical research? I'm all I'm doing is observing. I guess I can stop observing stuff if it means that much to you. Jeez. And Martin, like, like a cat, right? Goes to push something off of the edge of the observation deck. What are you, are you pushing Ross or are you like pushing an item? Uh, like, like an item. Yeah, yeah, okay. no, like, <laughs> like, a, like an item. <laughs> uh, Ross will... stop? Are you gonna stop? <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to do that. We can see, like, they pick up a notebook and get ready to write down like what happens when she pushes it over. Is that what you want to do? It? It? You <laughs> suck. You suck. You're an <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a 
very rude thing to say. And you know what really sucks here? Martin, I, I, want, I want to point out that Alfrey makes this noise. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what really sucks here, Martin? It's that. And they point back into the biome. All right, do you want to do there? Unless Martin's going to look. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I have to look, right? Yeah, you're angry there's a directional finger. I mean, <laughs> unless you're yeah, going to give a different true. finger. Um, I mean, I was, I was very seriously considering turning on my heel and leaving this area. <laughs> Because that actually seems like the smart move right now. Um, yeah, but this I game's not leave. called Geniuses, no, is it? <laughs> no, I am gonna, I am gonna leave because she, they didn't take my bait of pushing their crap off the edge, and so I'm just done. I'm just done. I, I, all right. So to to take the risk and to uh, kind of help everyone. Alfrey is going to enter that room and like looks over at Martin like and just kind of gives like a a very sweet goodbye. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen in there, and just draw and like it, but also takes his claw like his little claw and like makes an M before going in there and just walks into the room. Into the biome? Yeah. All right. That's beautiful, by the way. Really? Yeah. All right. How do we think that scene went for Russ? Oh, wait, no, we, we chose, we established. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so sorry. Did we, did you outcome it the way you wanted to outcome it? No. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of figured it would be a negative outcome, whatever mm -hmm. happened. But I feel like that was positive for us. But like, like how, why do you think it's positive? I'm, I'm not. I mean, you can you can be whatever you want. I just. Um, I think be because like instead of Martin being able to like think clearly through why this might be Ross's fault, like in the end she just like stormed off, mm -hmm. and Ross is able to get a lot of really good research. Like she made a lot of, they made a lot of really interesting observations. Yeah. Um, while at the same time potentially uh sabotaging Martin's ability to continue working with penguins. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Um, since we're getting close to the end of the hour, I'm gonna say we get like two more scenes and then the aftermath. So if someone super wants a big scene, but I think we um the last scene should probably be the reveal of what's in there or or that could happen now now that we're watching our friend uh alfie like go into the the biome so i don't know if you're all sorry and not to direct it i'm just you know <laughs> people got stuff to do it's friday night you know you know <laughs> so uh do we want to start with yeah sorry i'm waiting for anybody to Oh, I would yeah, love yeah. to see Alfrey face off against the creature. Yeah, okay. Mel, how do you feel about the Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, well, actually, I'll start from um, Melo Swade's perspective of uh, uh, this will be explained now. Um, he just gets like a sudden sense of like something is wrong while he's outside. And um, he barrels all the way in, um, crashing, breaking doors in the process, as, uh, because he's always wanted to do that really much. And he just, where is Alfrey? What's happening to Alfrey? Anybody? No one's going to tell uh, me? Va Vaughn runs back in from the outside. <sighs> <sighs> Well, how's my cardio? Um, sorry, I mean to scream. That's how I end every uh, workout session. Um, <laughs> uh, something penguins going inside the biome, the dome. The dome. I, we we watched a penguin from the outside, from the snow, come in and just go in. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I, I, Alfie didn't follow me out. I, 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 He's in there. 
he ran into the biome and Mello, without question, uh, just being the big lug that he is, charges through the door and immediately is just in like uh, like white space. And <laughs> and in there is um a penguin. And as he's like walking forward, so he's just like like I'm pretty sure it's Alfie. He just keeps going until it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's just like he realized it was forced perspective. He's like I, I, well obviously he doesn't know what forced perspective is, <laughs> but he's just <laughs> like I'm just, uh, I'm, I think I'm far farther from how I came in. It just uh, I don't I don't help help. help. There's so, help, and, and like he's just screaming for anyone to help him solve the science problem <laughs> that he just ran into. But whatever this penguin is, it is not Alfie, and it turns around and um, looks directly at him uh, with rage. Ross gasps upon seeing their hot cocoa buddy face <laughs> face the creature. Yeah, I think we're all gasping because like this, the dune is like, uh, uh, yeah, is like uh, sliding off, or the sand is sliding off this giant penguin. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Martin, are you up on the, where are you? Because you, you were, were walking away, but. Yeah, I think I was running away mm -hmm. and I have continued running away. Seems like the only smart play for me right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vaughn's still going to hit like the intercom button for the, the station. Just be like, there's it. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so I immediately go into snotty kid. There's a, a, a large penguin creature. We need our penguin doctors. Uh, Dr. Martin, please come to the desert. Biome, please, 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 please. Oh, my God. And you could probably hear. I don't what, uh, no, how do you what it was a giant penguin sound like? Uh, all you hear is panting and running. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, as yeah, and uh, so uh, Vaughn goes back up to to Ross, looking over. I'm like, we had to, we had to do something, right? Like, uh... yeah. Do you have any more house slippers? No. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> I well, you know what I do have though, and then uh, also like pulls out their like. Uh, pulls their uh, jumpsuit aside so you can see all the scat collections they have. I've got a lot of what we like to call dung bombs. Okay, yeah, let's definitely make use of those. You don't see, what are you bringing to this equation, huh? <laughs> um, so I was just going to mention that I actually have uh, this, lo this like distance laser that I was going to use to like cut slices for samples of cacti from a distance. Do you want to try... Yeah, no, use that. Are you kidding? I'm going to wing ding my knife over here and you've got a laser? All right. Well, I mean, it, it's for, I mean, it's for vegetation. I don't know exactly what it will do to this unprecedented giant penguin. That could be a giant cactus for all we know. You know what? That's a great point. Yeah. Less talking, more lasering. Uh, yeah, I guess Ross will go, uh, go over to the, the other side of the observation deck and start setting up the laser. Oh my god, how long is this gonna take? <laughs> Not long. It's mostly just like powering it up. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we gotta yeah, power you're, like, up laser. Up. you're like, you're like, get Too the sun, the bangle, the wind. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> the wind. It's in 20 the... crates. I gotta put it together. <laughs> <laughs> um uh yeah, and what's happening to uh with Mellow? Mellow Swain. Um Mellow Swain um busts out of the biome and something very weird happens the minute that he comes out. Uh, Weird or err. <laughs> um, he yells to Ross, turn the laser up to exactly 17.83 decibels. As, uh, like, he suddenly knows those words. So, like, right, yeah, suddenly, yeah. I was gonna... <laughs> wow. It, 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 like, I'll explain later. That was great. <laughs> just, that was... just do it. Ross, that was three syllables. <laughs> <laughs> also, this laser's measurements aren't in decibels, but I think I know what conversion he has in mind. Uh, is, oh, is it Jules? Is it Jules? Just do it. 
<laughs> yeah, let me just let me just fiddle with this thing here. Uh, and let me take care of yeah, I think I got this. I think I've got the the decibel count that he wanted. Click, click, Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin, get your ass back to the biome. Dr. Martin, <laughs> if you're alive, if you and your muscles are alive, get back here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I will roll up to the observation deck and tim very timidly enter the room. We're right. going to shoot a laser at this giant penguin, and you're the penguin expert. Do you mm -hmm. feel like that's a good idea? I mean, we're, we're going to do it regardless of what you say, but your opinion would also be helpful. He just stares at you. Like <laughs> where, where are the weak points? Think of it like a video game. Is it like a glowing red gem in the chest? Is it like right under the left flipper? Like, what do you bring? Bring us that penguin heat. Aim for where the human equivalent of where the deltoid would be. Just trust me. I don't go for the head or the neck. I don't know. I've never tried to murder a penguin before. But you, we, I've never tried to murder a human before. But I know there's places to go. Like. There's there's destinations on the body to visit and to stamp into your passport if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> all right, Ross will aim for the the neck area, but like a little bit lower to try to get both like deltoid and neck based on what Martin and Mel yeah, have said. I feel like they have like really long deltoids. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I, I, I don't know take penguin biology. Of anatomy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. And we're like, are we, um, and we're like trying to help mellow up, like, mellow, mellow, like, yeah, like, like. Are you using your like, dung bombs as a distraction? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Vaughn hands uh, Martin a couple dung bombs. This goes, okay, just pretend that penguin's me. Okay. Is, is that feces? You're, you bet your ass it is. <laughs> <laughs> just like, mom, mom. And she's just going, kangaroo. <laughs> Wallaby, <laughs> golden retriever. <laughs> like as she's like saying which samples she's losing, but you know, um, yeah. And uh, Martin, what do you do? Are you throwing the poop, or are you just holding yeah, it? just much less enthusiastic. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we call this scat ball. I'm just kidding. There's no we. It's just me. There's nobody likes to play this game. All right, uh, we provided enough cover and given you enough time, uh, Ross. Absolutely, the laser's ready. Yeah, penguin they turn it on. <laughs> and uh, I guess penguin gets shot by a laser. Yeah, that yeah, penguin this, this gets lasered. Pink <laughs> is the noise I'm assuming it makes. Um, and yeah, uh, but where is Alfie? I'll explain later. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. Okay. What happens when you laser it, Jess? I think probably what happens is the laser, like, slices right through where Ross was aiming it, um, and the head kind of, like, plops off. And it, But instead of, like, the insides of a penguin, like, instead of, like, what you would expect to see when that happens, what, you, what we now see is just, like, two giant piles of smaller individual penguins that, mm -hmm. like this thing is now like falling apart into like dozens and dozens of penguins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vaughn screaming, agglutinative! It's agglutinative! Like, <laughs> <laughs> keep lasering! Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, for, a, for a final explanation as well, that, that, will, that will help explain everything later. Uh, <laughs> Mellow <Yeah>. yells, <laughs> yeah, Mellow yells to the other penguins, and it's just like everybody is one. And they just say, start trying to hold it in place as it's being shot. I'm like, I swear I I will explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, we've we've uh we've saved Mellow. We've uh lasered this penguin back into its separate parts. So I think if everyone wants to flip this last card and I'll add it to the previous math, and we can figure out the aftermath. Yeah. Uh and I appreciate you all uh kind of you know jumping in on that collaborative last scene so we can end at a reasonable time. Um, and I'm pulling out the Aftermath deck now. She said with so much confidence. Um, all right, you got a red three mellow. Yes, it is. So adding that with your previous ones gives you a blue three. Jess, what did you get? <laughs> okay, you got so a think, 
Yeah, am I even dot at zero now? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I don't like how excited you are about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's gonna be a red zero though, because that's the highest card. Jen, oh my God, Jen. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have red eleven. Dang. All right, and I got, I had blue too, so I have blue five now. All right, and I will give everyone their cards. Um, bum, 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 bum. One second, just doing that thing where I find the cards. Um, what is everyone, what is everyone's character's favorite snack, by the way? We know it's, uh... <laughs> Were you gonna say we know it's hot chocolate for Ross? Yeah, I, I was going to say that. Yeah. Sorry, um, from... Yeah, I guess it would be uh, hot chocolate as well for Mama. Excellent. Excellent. Martin's totally got some ridiculous like kale salad or something that everyone hates. <laughs> yeah. It's just because uh Martin doesn't ever um massage it properly, so because they like the bitterness, maybe. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got a red lemon. All right, and I'm gonna say Vaughn's was uh obviously just a like candy bars, but kind of look like poop, so. That's just yeah. uh, who yeah. she is. Okay. <laughs> All right. I have dealt everyone these aftermath cards out on the table. Um, so we will start with. Oops. Uh, we'll start uh, with. Um, actually, we start with you, Je uh, Jen, and tell us what what oh. how the how how you uh, how Martin mm -hmm. uh, sort of what the denouement of their story is here. Yeah, so I actually, I come out tolerable out of this. I'm not entirely sure how, but there's probably like several research papers and uh, maybe some like awards, uh, like not really good ones, but like, you know, some some grants, maybe some little ones. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm still in Antarctica though. <laughs> you know, you never get your pass back home. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, next would be uh, Jess. How uh, how do things work out for Dr. Ross? So Dr. Ross got the worst thing, which is that now that this penguin has been like taken apart into its pieces um, and is no longer like an interesting thing that they can study in the desert biome, uh, the people who run this research facility have come back and extended Ross's contract so they have to stay here longer to try to figure out what's going on with like why these penguins are so obsessed with the desert biome and why like being in the desert biome made them like conglomerate like that. Um, and so not only are they stuck in Antarctica, this place they hate for even longer, but now there's no hot chocolate and there never will be again. They've decided that it's out of the budget to keep ordering hot chocolate. That is terrible. That is absolutely and appalling. Ross handed in their letter of resignation and the supervisor tore it up and said, no, you're completing your contract. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to Ross. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. All right, Mellow Suede. Um, yeah, the ending for Mellow Suede is repulsive. And that, that character is definitely dead on the inside because the secret that happened while uh, he was in the biome was that he discovered that, uh, yep, yeah, uh, he, oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, he discovered that Alfie was him. Oh, no. The full experiment was that uh, uh, it, there was a basically a time distortion. Like, time didn't exist in there. So all the penguins, that long list of people that Dr. Ross had, had went in there and came back out as penguins again for Martin to study later. That's all the weirdness happening. What? what? Some and evil Dr. No Name. Mm -hmm. So Alfred was actually just mellow from the future, uh, which is why they were like hanging out so well. Yeah, that's <laughs> why he loved the gym so much. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but because there was no time in there and that all information was available, he knew exactly what was needed to be done to stop the ultimate favorite. Um, but he lost his best friend, which was himself. <laughs> so uh, he is just um, repulsed uh, with life, with himself a bit, with life, and 
of course, Dr. Ross, and yeah. now forever Hot Chip Coco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, is trying to find uh, a way to be less smart again. Ignorance oh. is bliss. Oh, beautiful. Um, all right, and I got appalling for Vaughn. Uh, don't seem bitter, but I'm under like crush, forced to eat my words. So I'm going to assume that uh, for this, this means that she actually got pulled away from uh, the uh, McMurdo station and sent to somewhere, um, which does have more dung, but she wanted to be the foremost scat scientist, uh, the um, um, Dr. Decay of the ice realm. And now uh, they, they sent some like, hotshot uh, Twitter influencer that just does like uh, reports of their own uh, bowel movements from a toilet. And that's their new doctor of uh, decay uh, down south. Uh, sorry, I don't why. <laughs> it just seemed right. <laughs> no, but, or someone who's smarter than her, probably that too. Yeah, both of those people are both are replaced her. So yeah, she's very sad. And also because she felt like she was finally breaking through and making one friend, Dr. Martin. Never again. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for coming and playing the ice. We had so much fun with you all. Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah uh, you were fantastic. Um, let's go in reverse order, if that's okay. And you all let know, let uh, let uh, the audience know where they can find you online and any other shows, streams, podcasts, books, whatever you have that you want to you want to push what's coming out. And so, uh, Jen, we'll start with you. Uh, yep. Uh, I have been Jen Martin, she, her. Um, I, I don't think I have anything coming out, um, but we are working on some new fiasco ideas. I'm just going to leave that there. So, yeah, that's pretty much all for me. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right, Jess, how about you? Uh, I've been Jess Ross, they, them. You can find all of my stuff that I do on my website, writejess.com. And you should also keep an eye on the D20 Dames Twitter account for an upcoming announcement for an upcoming stream that we're going to do uh, this month in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. All right, and Mellow. And I have been Mellow Brown, he, him. And uh, you can find Blade Runner Origins on your local, at your local comic book shops and wherever you... Um, retail comic books as well as a, a few more books and a few more tv shows on the way um as i work in a lot of your franchises and um i you can find me on twitter at El mellow marketer for all targeted harassment that was a joke that was a joke <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, yeah doing a bunch of fun stuff excellent uh thank you so much i have been Jen Vaughn, your host. We will be back here in on April 1st for April Fools. <laughs> no joking, though. It's actually happening. Um, if you would like to see more of my work. Oh, 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 oh. I'm just screaming. Um, <laughs> my graphic novel, Took, comes out next Tuesday on Took's Day, March 8th. So if you are a fan, look at that, of middle grade horror or just horror in general that you can share with people, uh, it is written by Mary Donning Hahn, and it was adapted by Scott Peterson, Hank uh, Jones, and myself. And so, I mean, it's got a score and everything. Sorry, I'm just excited. I'm like, uh, look at this pile of dead trees. Um, Yeah, so you can also listen to me on D20 Dames, uh, wherever podcasts are free, or on my Ryutama podcast. It's a little bit more like a Studio Ghibli type world. Um, uh, Poison of Prophecy. Uh, and you can look for that online under the Crow decks. So a lot of words, but yeah, other than that, um, we are excited to see you next time. Thank you so much to our producers, Fawn, for uh, having a fun with the layout and making sure we all sound and look good. Uh, thank you so much to Christine from Bully Pulpit for making sure that we were here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jason, for making this wonderful game. Uh, I guess thanks, Roll20, for the time. And obviously, thank you so much for you. Uh, we love you. We miss you. Um, and uh, thank you all for uh, watching and we will see you next time on April Fools. It's getting hot in here. No, sorry, we should have. <laughs> <laughs>